sure that Zamazenta can do a lot, especially when it gets the defense boost from its ability Dauntless Shield when it hits the field. But it's not going to be stacking those boosts. No, it's not. But hey, that's a beautiful looking Zamazenta. Yeah. I definitely got my shiny Zamazenta and Zacian when I ended up doing the uh, release that they had. But we are in this top eight match between Keanu and Asanto and Rajan Ball. Rajan is going to be bringing the Maridon and the Incineroar. And of course, we see the Rillaboom and the Zamazenta here for Keanu. Rillaboom was a must bring for Keanu in this matchup because you want to have an ability to remove the terrain off the field and unfortunately for Keanu, the only other Pokemon that could really do that would be Chien Pao, but it's running Icicle Crash and not Ice Spinner. Well, not too bad start here, though, because you just get to go for a Draco Meteor into that Rillaboom. Oof. It is a Choice Band set, too, so that Assault Vest not there, as we would typically see to be able to keep you safe from something like that Draco Meteor. So who needs the Electric Terrain when you also get a chance to have a Stab Dragon-type attack? One hit knockout here and Zamazenta not being able to move. Keanu does get a chance to switch into something else, but maybe the Chan Pao gonna help out here with that sort of ruin ability. It'll ensure that the physical attacks that the Zamazenta and the Chen Pao are about to throw onto the field will do a little bit more damage. That being said though, I think what Keanu has to play towards here is assuming the Maridon is going to switch out. It just got that huge Draco Meteor off. It has taken a minus two to its special attack. There is no electric terrain on the field. And with four Pokemon remaining for Rajon, it does seem like a very likely switch. So you could have the option here to go for maybe a Sacred Sword or a Body Press onto that Incineroar, try and knock it out this turn, and then just hope whatever comes in is going to be more of a support for Maridon, and then try to figure out how you're gonna get through that Maridon, because it is so insanely powerful as we've seen. Yeah, well, there it is going to reset the boost now as it's left the field, and Rajan had a pretty difficult decision to make of what you're going to bring in in its place. Ogre Pond is nice because it has the sturdy ability, so if it's not going to be a double target into that slot, you should be able to stick around. But we also see this Incineroar go for its terrestrialization, the grass type now coming out, and that'll be uh, maybe a bit of a risk to take. The Champa does have Icicle Crash, but at the very least, you are keeping yourself safe from the Sacred Sword as well as from the bottom body press from this Zamazenta. But there's the sturdy ability activating, really coming in clutch here for that Ogre Pond, but it's the double into that slot. So Ogre Pond just goes down as soon as it comes in. It's nice though that the Ogre Pond was able to take two hits. I mean, if it wasn't for that sturdy ability that Icicle Crash would have been a one hit knockout. Instead now, Rajan has the opportunity to send in both that Maridon and either the Incineroar or his final Pokemon to the field to provide Maridon the best possible support in the sports state. Yeah, the U-turn's so nice, and something that we've seen on the Assault Vest Incineroar tech is just being able to have a pivot outside of Parting Shot is so necessary in order to cycle through those Intimidates, and even better, when you have to help this Maridon be able to switch around. Some people might be wondering why U-turn over Parting Shot. If it wasn't for the Assault Vest, which obviously means you have to use a damage move and Parting Shot doesn't do damage, I also think that U-Turn is a nice adaptation because we are seeing more clear amulet, especially on those Calyrex Ice Riders. It just makes sure that you're able to switch around as needed and get those uh, fake outs back on the field. All right, well, was, as Maridon comes back in, it is going to reset that electric terrain. But then you also have to think about what's going to be taking its place. Uh, it's because of the U-turn, and now it's the end of the turn. That's, yep. that's what's been the delay here. You got to take every single second, though, to think through these situations. Because, you know, we talk so much about how trainers prepare for these tournaments. I do not think that anybody prepared for Eladios, Moltres, Zamazenta team. And admittedly, we've only seen the Zamazenta out of those three. You have to wonder, like, what is Keanu's final Pokemon? I guess we're going to have to wait and find out, but yeah. it might be pretty quick because this Chan Pao is not too long uh, for, for this battle. Depending on how they're trained, though, Chien Pao and Maridon are in the same uh, speed tier just because their base speeds are the same, 135. But we are going to see a manual switch of this Incineroar leaving the field, Whimsicott taking its place, but Zamazenta is going to take a Protect here. I so like what does this Chan Pao end up doing? Because it is going to be faster, so the Icicle Crash into Whimsicott now is going to bring it down to its Focus Sash. I really like the fact that Keanu went for the attack there. I think a lot of people would have been tempted to maybe protect that Chan Pao, so that way if you get faked out plus an attack from a Rhydon, you don't lose that Pokemon. However, by going on the attack, 
and almost calling that the Incineroar was going to switch out to try and preserve the fake out for later on in this game. You are able to put that Whimsicott down to its Focus Sash, and now it's realistically only going to get one turn. It's a tough decision to make, though, because this Whimsicott in particular has access to Tailwind and to Encore, and that Zamazenta did just use Protect. Yeah, so but I think you choose... need the Tailwind here. I, I agree that you do need the Tailwind for the speed control ultimately, but it's tempting. Yeah, I, 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 do see what, I do see what you mean, because it would be nice to lock that Zamazenta into having to protect again, but then you run the risk of that protect actually working true. for the second time. So it's, it's not always the, the payoff as I think people would expect it to be. But typically, we do see Maridon is not trained to be as speedy as the Champau, even though they are the same base speed. So it's nice to know that you can set the Tailwind for yourself and make sure that you are going to have that speed in your favor. There is still Sucker Punch on the board here for the Champau. Pal, so that could not end up not mattering, but it's you can see the vault switch now is going to be enough to knock out this Chan Pao. But Keanu did get this switch into the Latios, and we finally get to see what this is going to do. Yeah, so Latios is a very curious Pokemon. Um, it has obviously been around since Generation 3, as it was one of those rarer Pokemon that you could encounter in the Hoenn region. Uh, way back in the day, the item Soldu was released, and at that point in time, it was so powerful that it actually wasn't allowed in VGC. <laughs> now that we are here in 2024, however, Soldu does provide a 20% boost to any Psychic and Dragon-type attacks. So if this Latios opts for a Draco Meteor or it opts for a Luster Purge, that's going to get an additional boost of damage. I'm not sure that Latios is going to have the opportunity to use those damaging attacks, though, as it is going to be slower than the Maridon um, when it makes a, a return eventually to the field. And, you know, potentially could be slower than this Incineroar as well, depending on how it's trained. I mean, I know you were just saying there are a lot of fast <laughs> Incineroar out in the well, format. Well, we just saw one on stream. Exactly. So maybe it's a little bit of recency bias, but also knowing what I, I faced preparing for this event, I'm like, okay, yeah, maybe there are a couple of really speedy Incineroar out there but for this upcoming turn Whimsicott's going to protect itself so whatever might be coming in its direction like this icy wind is not going to be affecting it this turn but it's nice to know that you can start to keep this Incineroar in check in terms of dropping its speed so even though it's in tailwind right now it might just give the Zamazenta a fighting chance as a body press just to help whittle away at this Incineroar's HP but that U-turn is so much damage that Latios just took half Latios is unfortunately the least bulky one when compared to Latios. You know, each one of them had their own specialty. Latios is very defensively bulky. Latios is very offensive in its special attack. So that's something that you have to keep your an eye on here. Now that we're slowly starting to run out of Tailwind turns, it does make me wonder if this Latios may be able to sneak an attack in here, but if the Latios is taken down, I don't think there's much this Zamazenta can do to stop this Maridon. So Keanu has been making some great predictions towards his endgame, but this damage is starting to add up for Rajan, and I think as long as this Maridon can keep attacking, Rajan definitely has the momentum on his side. Absolutely. I mean, it, it's a tricky decision here, too. I think choosing between Electro Drift or, or Draco Meteor and maybe even just pivoting out. Because it's like you want to make sure that you're dealing damage into the Zamazenta, but also both these Pokemon can protect. So you've got to kind of consider your options here. Maradon is just not even going to deal with it right now. Really wants to play this safe. The Incineroar can come in, get another Intimidate drop down onto the Zamazenta, and hopefully this Whimsicott is going to be able to just knock out this Latios here and now. Yeah, I love how safe Rajan is playing this. At the end of the day, you know, the Maridon is is the scariest Pokemon on his side of the Ooh. field. But we do have a terrestrialization we here for do. the Zamazenta to tear grass. We do. So now this Zamazenta uh, will be a little bit more defensively suited for this board position. Grass typing does way better against electric type attacks. Unfortunately, though, dragon types are still very weak to fairy type attacks. And Whimsicott, even though it doesn't look it, has a really good special attack stat. It does, it does. Those Moon Blasts always hit a little bit harder than I expect them to. But now it's just a oh, 2v1. Yep. Keanu is just down to the Zamazenta, still has some pressure. But knowing that this Incineroar on Rajin's team still has the Flare Blitz, because of the Assault Fest, you know that it can still hit it for super effective damage, and a one-two punch here should be enough to get this not Zamazenta out of here. Yeah, I'm glad that you called out as well that it's really the Assault Vest that makes room for the Flare Blitz. If you think about a lot of the Incineroar we've seen throughout the weekend, 
a lot of times people have been running Will-O-Wisp as their fire type attack, which obviously doesn't do damage, which means you can't use it on an Assault Vest Incineroar. So it does mean that this Incineroar is going to be forced to deal damage, but in this situation, especially when you force the grass type terrestrialization from your opponent, this just works out very well. Well, you at least sold out the Tailwind, right? So yeah. maybe you're still able to do a bit of damage to this Maridon before it does knock you out, but Electro Drift is going to move first. And that is, even though a grass type and not very effective, that is the power of the choice specs, the electric terrain, and just the general stab from Maridon being an electric type. It sort of takes that body press like a champ, and the flare blitz into the Zamazenta. Rajan is going to win game number one. Zamazenta really did do its best here, but unfortunately was not able to match the sheer power of this Maridon. And at the end of the day, I think that's what Keanu has to be thinking about going into game number two. We saw that Maridon initially on the field from Rajan. We saw that Keanu tried to anticipate that, try to force a switch at least that turn number one with the terrain. But Rajan knowing that Draco Meteor was enough to get that one hit knockout, that just wasn't the play. I think if you're at Keanu, you do want to bring that Rillaboom for terrain control, but it's almost like you can't lead it or you just have to commit to going for fake. It doesn't have fake out. That Rillaboom no. doesn't have fake out. No, so it doesn't. So you can't even do that. No, I mean, you have high horsepower, though. True. That is a nice option to have, but the problem is is that Maridon is going to be faster than you. Exactly, So yeah. it's it's like you could do Grassy Glide damage, but even on terrain, it doesn't necessarily feel like it's going to do enough in that case. But leading the Latios in the front is also so risky because yes. you know that you're dealing with a Prankster Tailwind user in that Whimsicott, and so that does make things a little bit more funky to ensure that you get the Tailwind instead. Yeah, well, I, I mean, you also have to consider the fact that if Keanu did try to match Tailwinds, I mean, his Tailwind user is the Galarian Moltres, which um, will also be taking super effective damage from Moonblast. I, I haven't done my Galarian Moltres calcs in a while, so forgive me, but it is possible that this Moltres could withstand a Moonblast, take enough damage to activate the Berserk ability, and then go for a very powerful Fiery Wrath. But yeah, but Galarian Moltres is really slow. Exactly. Like, compared to everything else, Else, knowing that Maridon has a faster base speed, like you you're just know that it's going to be a little bit tricky. And I'm thinking that even if, like, I don't even know if you actually get a chance to use Tailwind because you, you have the Tailwind set first from the Whimsicott, and then Maridon just might outspeed yeah. before you get to use the Tailwind. The yeah, it, it's, power of Prankster. It, it really is one of those things where it's up for Rajon to set the pace and Keanu to respond. Like, it's such a cool team from Keanu, and I love the creativity. It's just unfortunate that it gets Maridon. You know, I mean, there's two bird Pokemon there. We saw that Draco Meteor take out the Rillaboom. This team, I think, was probably anticipating seeing a lot more Calyrex and uh, fewer bikes. Maybe. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's... Yeah. It got here, right? It, it's it in did. top eight. It got here, and Keanu has been able to have just a great performance with this in the weekend. I really hope this is going to give some trainers some inspiration to actually use their own Zamazenta team. Because it's really cool that Zamazenta gets body pressed. Usually it is a like huge hit into the Incineroar, if not a one-hit knockout sometimes. So maybe that's something that you get a chance to use heading into this game. As we get into game number two of this best of three set in our top eight, Keanu is behind the eight ball, needs to get a win on the board here in order to keep that top four dream alive. Going to kick things off with the Zamazenta as well as this Qian Pao versus the Ogre Pond and Maridon from Rajin. As it is Zamazenta's first time on the field for this game, it will use its Dauntless Shield ability to boost its defense up one stage. It also has not been intimidated yet, which does mean that these body presses are going to be doing significantly more damage. There is a very easy target on the field here, I think, in the form of that Ogre Pond, as we saw just how much damage Icicle Crash did to it in the previous turn. You also have to wonder, though, what this Maridon is going to do and how it's going to match up against these two Pokemon. Zamazenta's bulky enough that I would be skeptical that the Maridon could get a one-hit knockout on it. We also know that this Chen Pao has Focus Sash, which means it'll also be taking two hits there. So I think Keanu has an opportunity here to get some good damage down on the board. It's just all coming down to targeting. 
Yeah, but does Keanu get a chance to, to, to even let Rajan attack here? It depends, because there's no protect, but the Icicle Crash on the Maridon, it's a critical hit, which is so much damage, but the flinch oh. is the important part! The Maridon does not get a chance to move this turn, as the Ivy Cudgel brings the Champ out down to its Focus Sash, but the Zamazenta is going to be the one that still gets to strike back. Is this just going to be a knockout onto the Maridon? And it is with the Body Press, and that is such a huge powerhouse Pokémon for Rajon down. That Icicle Crash coming in clutch with that flinch. We didn't get to see Maridon actually attack that turn, unfortunately, but had Rajan doubled into that Chen Pao, we would be looking at a very different turn going into this. The Ogre Pot is still at full health, which does mean it has access to the sturdy ability, and Ivy Cudgel did incredible damage to that Chen Pao, but Keanu is in a position now. Both of his Pokemon have Protect. He could potentially switch out that Zamazenta to drop the Intimidate if he's worried about that. This game is so much wider open for him now that Maridon is gone. Yeah, I mean, this is a much better position for the Zamazenta to be in, but that's what you've got to play for. Exactly. You know that Maridon is fast, but you have an opportunity there to potentially get that secondary effect of the flinch from the Icicle Crash, and that played out beautifully. The work isn't done yet, though, because we still have three more Pokémon that Keanu is going to have to get through. And Sarah is going to stay on the field as we do see a switch of this Ogre Pond in favor of this Whimsicott. So Whimsicott, another way that you can really withstand some of these attacks, have that focus sash be able to keep you around and maybe help you get that speed control because you are going to be some of the slowest Pokemon on the field now. This Chen Pao, though, is going to go for the Terra Ghost. Perfect choice if you are worried about a fake out coming in your direction, but the fake out is going to go into the Zamazenta. Means this Chen Pao still gets a chance to go for another Icicle Crash. It's not going to miss and just brings that Whimsicott down to its focus sash right away. That's okay, though, because I think this Whimsicott was switching in so that it could set up the Tailwind prior to the Ogre Pond making a return to the field. I think the question, though, is just how do you maneuver this Ogre Pond back out onto the field? We did see what Rajan locked into, and it does make me wonder if he's anticipating Keanu maybe focusing in on the Whimsicott with the Chen Pao so that the Zamazenta, which is dealing less damage at this point in time, targets into the Incineroar. But that's such a tough read to make as well, because you don't want to switch in the Ogre Pond in a situation where it's going to take damage and then it's going to lose sturdy. Yeah, but I mean, I, I think at this point, Rajan is still really behind. Like, yes. you have two like very powerful attacks on the other side that could head in that Incineroar's direction. It's going to be a protect here from the Chien Pao, though, perfectly reading that this Whimsicott wants to try to take it down does open up Rajan to be able to bring in the Incineroar a little bit later, but the body press, like, see, is just perfect coverage because you know you're going to get super effective damage either way. Yep, that's exactly right. I, I do like the Whimsicott trying to deal that last bit of damage to the Chen Pao for the KO there, uh, recognizing how the targeting would go that turn from Keanu, and I think realizing that there would still be one more opportunity for the Whimsicott to attack. I, it, as you're in a tough position again, though, with what do you do with the Whimsicott? If you go back to game number one, we were talking about Tailwind versus Encore, and you said, well, Rajan needed the speed control. But if you notice, Keanu actually switched out the Pokemon that could have been Encore into Protect regardless. So while I do agree that I think the speed control is needed here now, I do wonder if we're going to see Chen Pao switch out rather than go for a Sucker Punch to try and ensure that it can get the, it can land a KO onto the Ogre Pond before yeah. it's knocked out. I know, I think like you just have to try to go for damage here and already yeah. like I think no matter what Rajan does, it just it doesn't really uh help you but Sucker Punch is going to go first anyway because of the priority. Yep. So that's where you just go ahead and deal with that even though it gets encored into it, Whimsicott gets taken down by the body press and it's just down to the Incineroar. So master class by Keanu. I know it's like it doesn't feel good to be on the receiving end of a flinch like that, but that's the out you have to play for and that is going to bring us into a game 3. It does make me wonder how game 3 is going to go. Like if you think about it, you're absolutely right that Keanu playing towards that flinch was his endgame in this situation. Rajan brought the same four Pokemon that we saw from him in game number one, and as a result, when the Maridon was down, there was only so much damage the team could do and things really opened up to Keanu. So then if you're Rajan, you have to wonder, well, I like these four Pokemon in this matchup, but is my opponent gonna try to go for that flinch again? And if so, do I take that risk? 
it, it's I think you have to bring Maridon. Obviously, I'm not saying leave Maridon behind, but I am wondering if you anticipate another Chen Pao lead, you just don't leave Maridon, so you don't leave yourself open to that flinch. And then you try and utilize your Focus Sash Pokemon, your Sturdy Pokemon, to ensure that you can uh, hit that back. Yeah, but it still it still plays out differently if you don't flinch, right? We were even True. talking about that, that like, if Maridon gets to move and it was a double into the Chien Pao, the Chien Pao just goes down. And so does yeah. that then open up the door to just be able to sweep the game? I, I get where it's like, okay, I have hesitations here, but also maybe you just still lead them right on anyway because it's good coverage into everything it is it's just do you take that risk at, at the end of the day i mean it's you miss the shots that you don't take is all i'm saying yeah i i respect it and i think if i were in rajan's shoes i would probably also continue to lead the ride on in hopes that my opponent you know if they do go for that strategy it works out in my favor this time around but it, it's top eight i mean that's a lot on the line you know that this is Keanu's first time making cut in a tournament like this. You know that um, he's going to be giving you everything that he has. And at the end of the day, it, it's it's hard. Because like, when you play Pokemon as a competitive game, you want to play it in a way where you're minimizing risk. And it's almost like this Catch-22 where you know what your opponent's going to try to do. But are you taking more risk by just assuming that that's not going to happen? Well, one way to find out, and that's yes. to get into our game number three. We are tied one apiece in this top eight match at the Indianapolis Regional Championships. Both Rajan and Keanu hoping to be able to keep that top cut dream alive to move on to the top four. And for Keanu, it's going to be bringing back this Zamazenta and this Chien Pao, but Rajan going to be leading with the Whimsicott this time around, as well as that Maridon. And this small difference, literally, you can barely see Whimsicott <laughs> hiding behind hiding. <laughs> right on there uh, does make things a lot more comfortable for Rajan because we've seen this Maridon be slower than the Chen Pao multiple times in this matchup. Whimsicott will be guaranteed to use Tailwind in this board state. You know you are going to outspeed and now you don't have to worry about the risk of a flinch. You do have to worry about the amount of damage you're going to take after you attack, but you are guaranteeing yourself the ability to attack. And if there is any Pokemon that can do a significant amount of damage while also maybe pivoting to keep itself safe, it's this Maridon. Well, you're also going to be Terra Electric now. Yeah. So that is definitely one way you can also help yourself. It's going to also amplify the damage of this attack. But it's super nice here as well because uh, no, hopefully whatever is in the back here for Rajon isn't going to be taking too much damage if you expect to see that come out. But there's also another terrestrialization as Keanu is going to use the same mechanic, but this time on the Zamazenta. Zamazenta is Terra Grass, so it's going to help keep itself safe from any of these electric type attacks. And that's really valuable. You've got the defense boost, but you need a way to be able to deal with this Maridon's damage output. Whimsicott goes for the Tailwind. This is going to allow the Maridon to be able to move first. And with the Volt Switch, you get a really nice pivot. You do. And that's still a lot of damage. I, it's not very effective, but it's very effective if you catch my Electro Drift. Uh, being able to do that much damage to Ooh. the Maridon or to the Zamazenta immediately means that it'll be able to follow up with a knockout later on in the game. And talk about an additional adjustment here. The Farigarap enters the field with Electric Seed to boost its defense. That's perfect to have in front of two physical attackers, the Chien Pao as well as the Zamazenta. I mean, take a look at that still going to be a lot of damage thanks to the defense boost that the Zamazenta has to its body press, but you're also denying any of those priority attacks with the armor tail ability. You are, and I do think that this Farigarap hitting the field at this point in time as well buys Rajan enough time to try and get rid of the Focus Sash on that Chen Pao, and it's taken enough damage in on the Switch, honestly, that it'll probably be KO'd before the end of Tailwind, which will just be some really nice synergy. It's unfortunate that Farigarap's role in this particular matchup is probably to helping hand or switch out and just otherwise provide support rather than maybe go for Trick Room or maybe do some more damage like we've seen from Farigarap in the past. But in Regulation G, you support your restricted Pokemon. You make sure Maridon can come back when it's ready. I mean, there is a really interesting option here on the Farigarap. It has access to Foul Play. So if you weren't already mitigating the attack output of the Chien Pao and the Zamazenta, that is another way that you can use their 
heavy attack stats against them. But this time around, it's going to be the Moonblast into the Chien Pao to bring it down to its sash. And that does put in range of just getting knocked out to the fake out next turn. No Terra on the board for this Chien Pao this time around. But the Icicle Crash and the Whimsicott is going to do the same thing in return. It is, and Whimsicott's also going to activate its Focus Sash. So we will see the body press but finally hit mean. its intended target, taking that Incineroar out in one hit. Even with that Intimidate, because the Zamazenta still had its defense boost from its Dauntless Shield, that was plenty of damage there. Yes, that is exactly what has been intended for the Zamazenta, and why we have seen whispers of the Zamazenta being such a formidable Pokemon to have in a single restricted format, when, I don't know, Sinsumer has been in 70 plus percent usage today in day two. I know, and if 70% of the time you get a one-hit knockout, it works every time. Yeah, exactly. That's definitely Joe Brown math right there. <laughs> but uh, Whimsicott still has a chance to, to hang around. We haven't seen Keanu make any switches, by the way. It's no. just been the Zamazenta and Chien Pao combination, and Rajan has still had a very hard time dealing with it. There's no way to be able to mitigate the attack stats anymore because that Incineroar is down for the count. And even if you have the Farigarath, yes, you could switch it in, but everything is already going to be so low. It's all down to this Maridon to keep this damage output going. We did see how much damage Maridon was able to do with Volt Switch into that Zamazenta. Had it gone for an attack here, maybe an Electro Drift, that could have put it timed into KO out. range, but he timed out. We will see the Electro Drift come in. Yeah, but if that's going to be the one yeah. that takes the take the uh, Electro Drift there. Uh, and it's oh. still going to be able to get a one-hit knockout because <laughs> that's just the power of Maridon and that Hadron engine, making sure it's going to really be able to get those knockouts. But the Moonblast 2 into the Zamazenta, this actually kind of works out nicely. Just a little bit of chip damage there with the body press to finish it off. This Chien Pao does get a chance to come back in now without the Intimidate drops. It does get a chance to come back in with the, the Intimidate drops. It does have the opportunity to uh, threaten some good damage, but Tailwind is still active on Rajan's side of the field, I believe. We haven't seen that expire yet. If that is true, then the Maridon is still faster than that Chen Pao. And because it's the Ferrigaraf that is the last Pokemon standing for Rajan, you can't rely on Sucker Punch to try and threaten any damage prior to taking an Not attack. Yet. But we Fine. do see another adjustment here from Keanu. It is that Rillaboom now hitting the field, taking away that electric terrain. This Maridon is still going to be crazy powerful, but it's going to be a little bit weaker. Uh, but that's what Helping Hand is for. Exactly. We talked about the Frigoraph being such a key supportive piece for this Maridon, not just because of its ability, but also because it has access to Helping Hand, to Trick Room. You're really hoping at this point that you're just going to be able to get another knockout and bring in this Chen Pao once again. So Helping Hand for the Maridon with the Electro Drift that you still have your, your ex extra little Terra boost to. And uh, that's that not a assault vest. Yeah, that is an assault vest. Not just another one-hit knockout. I don't think Keanu was expecting that, but that's two knockouts that this Maridon has taken with not very effective damage. The body press at least gets rid of the Furgaraf. So if you bring this champ out back in, you have that opportunity to go for the Sucker Punch now that the Armor Tail is off the field. But the Tailwind is gone as well, which is very critical. Now we know that Chen Pao will be faster than this Maridon. It is only an electric type Pokemon, which means that it will be taking neutral damage from Icicle Crash or Sacred Sword. Icicle Crash does have the higher base power worth of damage. And honestly, in this position, you need to find a way to KO this Maridon this turn. So if you think that you can connect the Icicle Crash, and I do think you need the extra base power, Oh, it was just a protect. It was just a protect. So reading, the champ is just going to go for the protect here. And Zamazenta going to oh, double it too. Oh, okay. that's smart. That's very, very smart. smart. Electro Drift only has a certain amount of PP, so you've got to be smart about how you're going to use this move. You also get the opportunity to see which Pokemon that Rajan was prioritizing the KO on, and it was going to be that Zamazenta. So that does mean that if you think Chen Pao can get the KO with Icicle Crash and Sucker Punch, well, we're about to find out. Icicle Crash tried it its misses. best, but it's going to miss the Maridon completely. The Electro Drift now into the Zamazenta as it was intended target last turn. And that is going to be a knockout. It's just down to this Chen Pao, and it's got to make sure it's got its glasses for these last couple attacks. That was
was a very unfortunate miss for Keanu there as it could have been the difference here in this matchup. Chen Pao does have another chance to attack. It does, and the Icicle Crash is going to connect this time, but is it going to be able to get the flinch? Because that's going to have to matter. And the Electro Drift goes through the Chen Pao knocked out, and Rajon moves on to the top four. What a close set there at the 